Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the undamped free vibration response of single degree of freedom system. So in the last lecture, we developed the one form of the solution and our equation was, this was our system and this is M and this is K and this was the equilibrium equation. This is X, X dot and X double dot. And we developed the governing equation that was MX double dot plus kx is equal to zero and we considered the solution for this as xt is equal to c e raised to the power st and from here if we satisfy the governing equation using this solution we develop this c m s square plus k is equal to zero so from here we can give the one statement the c cannot be zero so for that m s square plus k is equal to zero so this is the characteristic equation or auxiliary equation for this governing equation and from here the s will have two values two roots s1 and 2 and that was plus minus minus k by m square root of this and here this can be written as plus minus eta omega n here omega n is equal to under root k by m and eta is equal to square root of minus one right and as we know that the both of the values of s will satisfy this equation so the complete solution or generalized solution for this equation can be written as xt c1 e raised to power s1t plus c2 e raised to power s2t and this was c1 e raised to power Ita omega n plus c2 e raised to the power minus ita omega n right so here s1 is ita omega n and s2 is minus ita omega n and here we use the trigonometry relationship e raised to the power ita omega n minus plus i e raised to the power ita omega n t can be written as cos omega n t plus minus eta sine omega n t and if we use this trigonometric solution or trigonometric relation here then we'll have one solution that was a1 cos omega n t plus a2 sine omega n t here a1 and a2 are constant as c1 and c2 are constant so a1 was c1 plus c2 so this is the addition of two constants so can be written as new constant as a1 and a2 was eta c1 minus c2 so this is also constant so this can be written as new constant a2 right so here a1 and a2 we find out using initial conditions and initial conditions was displacement at t is equal to zero time that was x naught and velocity at t is equal to zero time that was x naught dot so using these two initial condition in this equation we find out a1 was x naught and a2 was x naught dot over omega n so complete solution if we insert the value of a1 and a2 at this place then this becomes x naught cos omega n t plus at the place of a2 we write x naught dot over omega n sine omega and t so this is the complete solution right so this was the first form of the solution okay so this solution is the first form of the solution so this form can be represented in another form and that will discuss in this lecture right so here this is the first form let's consider a1 equals to here in this solution we consider that a1 is equal to a cos phi and a2 is equal to a sin phi so if we replace a1 and a2 in this solution then this can be written as xt at the place of a1 this is a 
cos phi so we can write a cos omega and t cos phi at the place of a2 we can write a sin phi so this can be written as a sin omega and t sin phi and this can be written as a cos omega and t minus phi right and a can be find out using these two we can find out a equals to a1 square plus a2 square right so a1 we know that this is x naught so we can write x naught square and a2 is x naught dot over omega n so this is x naught dot over omega n square and square root of this whole so this is a and phi can be find out using these two so we can write tan phi equals to from here we can write tan phi equals to a2 over a1 right so from here we can write phi equals to tan inverse a2 over a1 and a2 is x naught dot omega n and a1 is x naught so we can write phi equals to tan inverse x naught dot over omega n x naught so this is the phi and this is the value of a so this is our second form of solution right so this is the second form of solution and third form can be developed here we can consider a1 equals to we can write a1 equals to a naught sin phi naught and a2 equals to a naught cos phi naught right so if replace these two values in the first form of the solution that was this one will have xt equals to a naught cos omega and t sin phi naught plus a naught sin omega and t cos phi naught right so a1 and a2 we replaced in this equation so this can be written as a naught sin omega and t plus phi naught right so here a naught we can be find out using these two so a naught is equal to a1 square plus a2 square and square root of this so if replace the value of a1 and a2 that would be x naught square plus x naught dot over omega n whole square of this and square root of this and phi can be find out phi naught can be find out using these two so we can say tan phi naught is equal to a1 over a2 so you can write tan phi naught is equal to a1 over a2 so phi naught can be find out using tan inverse a1 over a2 and as we know that a1 is equal to x naught and a2 is x naught dot over omega n so this is the value of phi naught right this is the value of a naught so our third form of the solution becomes this one right so we have three form of the solution right these three forms right now we'll discuss some specific case here as we know that the velocity is can be given by the first differentiation of well displacement so we can write displacement let's consider this equation this form of the solution xt is equal to a cos omega and t minus phi right so velocity can be find out x naught dot is equal to dxt over dt so from here we can write minus omega n a sin omega n t minus phi right 
and this can be written as omega n a cos omega n t minus phi plus phi by 2 and acceleration can be written as x double dot t equals to d square of x t over d t square so if we differentiate this equation once more time then this becomes minus omega n square a cos omega n t minus phi right and this can be written as omega n square a cos omega n t minus phi and plus phi right so from here we can conclude that the velocity this velocity leads the displacement by pi by 2 so you can write velocity leads the displacement by pi by 2 angle so this is the displacement and this is the velocity right and acceleration leads the displacement by pi angle right so this is the acceleration and this is the displacement so we can say acceleration leads the displacement by phi right and now we can consider some specific case right if the initial displacement is zero right so we can write if the initial displacement x naught is zero if initial displacement x naught is equal to zero right so we can write x t equals to x naught dot or omega n cos omega n t minus pi by 2 right and this can be written as x naught dot over omega n sine omega n t right so cos omega n t minus pi by 2 can be written as sine omega n t and similarly if the initial velocity is 0 if the initial velocity that is x naught dot is equal to 0 then x t can be written as or x t becomes x naught cos omega n t right so this is how we can decide for the phi and a now we need to be careful while deciding the phi in these two form of the solution so here this is the one form x t is equal to a cos omega n t minus phi and the second form is x t is equal to a naught sine omega n t plus phi naught so at the time of deciding the phi and phi naught or obtaining the phi and phi naught we need to be careful because phi can be positive like we can say phi can be positive when x naught and x naught dot over omega n both are positive right because tan phi is equal to or we can write tan phi is equal to x naught dot over omega n x naught and phi equals to tan inverse x naught dot over x naught or multiplied by omega n so phi is positive when x naught and x naught dot over omega n both are positive or x naught and x naught dot over omega n both are negative so in these two cases the phi will be positive so we can decide if this is how if this is represented x naught over omega n and this represents x naught right 
so if this is the case when x naught and x naught dot over omega n both are positive right so here phi will be positive and x naught is also positive and x naught dot over omega n is also positive so if this is the case then we have to take the value of phi which lies in the first quadrant right so phi of the first quadrant we have to choose and we need to put in the solution right and phi will be negative right so phi will be negative right you can say phi will be negative when x naught is negative and x naught dot over omega n is positive or x naught is positive and x naught dot over omega n is negative so in this case the phi will be lie in the second or fourth quadrant so if the x naught is negative so first case if the x naught is negative and x dot naught over omega n is positive so we have to take the value of phi which lies in the second quadrant right if this is the case x naught is negative and x naught dot over omega n is positive and if this is the case x naught is positive and x naught dot over omega n is negative then we have to take the phi of the fourth quadrant so if this is the case x naught is positive and x naught dot over omega n is negative then phi will be negative right here also phi will be negative so if this is the case then we have to choose the value of phi from the fourth quadrant right and second if this is the case both are negative when phi x naught and x naught dot or omega n both are negative so you can say x naught dot is also negative and x naught dot over omega n is also negative then phi will be positive and if this is the case then we have to take the value of phi which lies in the third quadrant right so this will be the phi so accordingly we have to choose the value of phi and phi naught those depends on the value of x naught and x dot over omega n right so according to the sign of x naught and x naught dot over omega n we can decide the value of phi from any quadrant of out of these four and that value we need to put in the form of the solution so this is how we can decide the value of phi in these form of the solutions so thank you